Hi guys, welcome to your video on using Collide 2D, which is a library for collision detection, meaning it helps you decide if two things are touching or not. Um, this is one of like the cooler interactions we're gonna learn about this year. We're introducing a new library because it's one step for us to simplify things. If you have friends who were in this class last year and years previously, they learned it a little differently. Um, and this is purely just us adapting and adjusting to remote learning to make your life a little better. Now, collisions are really cool if I know a lot of you have said you enjoy playing and designing games, and this is a really huge part of making things that are more game-like because, again, it allows you to see if two things are touching, which is important for almost every game you play. So let's get into it. Please make sure that you guys have opened up the starter code. It looks like this from your um, Google Doc for your classwork. And then go to File Duplicate. Remember, you only see that when you are logged in. Once you have duplicated it, go ahead and hit save and then get set up to code. Get this video in a window next to a window with your code so that you can see and hear me as we work together. I'm going to go ahead and make my text a little bit bigger because I know it can be hard to see on the YouTube screen. Um, and let's get going, guys. So right now, if I hit play in this code, we are going to see that I just get a canvas with um, these four circles and I see them right here. And my task is to make circle one change color if the mouse is on top of it, so the mouse is like in that circle, and then change back if the mouse is off it. We also see that in the console, I get a little message about P5 Collide that we've never gotten before. And that's because I have gone ahead and linked the Collide 2D library in this code, um, and I'm going to show you how I did that right now. So in addition to having this code open, please make sure you guys also open the Collide 2D library, which is linked in your work as well. It's a page that looks like this. Sorry, I was scrolled at the bottom. When you open it, it should look like this. And it can be a little overwhelming because this lives on GitHub, which is a code repository that everyone from hobby coders like um, like you guys might choose to be in the coming years, all the way up to professionals like you guys might be in several, several years, um, host and share their code. Now, the Collide 2D library is just a code library, very much like P5, and because it is a library someone else has written, very much like P5, they have provided documentation on how to use that library. When we think about P5, we think about the reference sheet. This is like the reference sheet for Collide 2D. If you guys scroll down, you're going to start to see some things that like you can read and that make more sense, and while you're welcome to read all of this, I'm going to kind of walk you through the long and short of it. Um, the way I linked this code is you will see that there's a whole thing about getting started and there's maybe some acronyms that we don't understand yet, but there's this little thing um, where we can take tags and put them into our library. So this one right here is the Collide 2D library that allows it to be linked in our index.html file, which you guys should all be familiar with from ninth grade. When I click over here, there is actually a hidden HTML file in my, my um, P5 sketch. If I click this arrow next to sketch.js, you guys do not need to do this in your program, this is just for your own knowledge, you'll see that there are actually three files here, and in the index, not only is the P5 library linked, that is these three script tags here, or sorry, these two script tags here, but I have gone ahead and added in the Collide 2D library. In future projects, if you guys would like to use Collide 2D in something you are making, you will either need to link the Collide 2D library yourself by just pasting this line in from the Collide 2D website, or you'll just need to duplicate the blank editor that I've provided for you that has Collide 2D linked, and that is now in the resources section of your weekly work. Um, I will also make sure it's very clearly posted in Google Classroom so that you always have access to that. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with how we're going to make this circle change color. And then we're going to head back to this library documentation to help us with that. So the first thing that I know is if I want something in my code to change, that means I need a variable for it. That means like it's going to vary, it needs a variable. So I'm going to head to the top of my code. And please remember guys, you can always pause or rewatch if you feel I'm going fast. And at the top of my code, I'm going to create a variable called C1 color, which stands for circle one color. Um, and I'm just abbreviating because I, I and most programmers are inherently very lazy people. We want to make cool things. We want it to make sense, but we also don't want to spend all day typing variable names. So I'm calling this C1 color. Um, and at the start of my program, I'm going to give C1 color a color to start. 
And this will be like what the color is when I hit run. So I'm going to start with magenta. You guys know I love magenta because I remember it off the top of my head. And I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And you'll notice that nothing happened. And this is actually a very common mistake I've been seeing in your code. Even though I made this variable and I gave it a color, I have not used this variable yet. If I wanted to actually control something in my program, I need to put it somewhere in my program. So I said I wanted to control the fill of circle one. And notice I have very nicely left comments for you guys. This is one of the reasons why code comments are so useful and why you should be leaving them for yourself. If I want a variable to control this color, I need to plug C1 color in place of that fill. And now when I hit play, ha, I get a beautiful, nice magenta circle. The other ones are all white because they still have their own fill. Now that this is taken care of, I'm going to go forth and deal with the logic of this variable. And I've told you guys that one way I like to organize my code is I like to kind of keep the static things that are always on the screen separate from the logic that controls them. So lines 11 to 25 right now, that's all the stuff living on the screen. I'm going to start coding my conditional right underneath this code along on line 28. It's still inside the draw function. The draw function ends on line 40, and I need this to be inside the draw function. But it is like a little separate from those ellipses, just so it's easier for me to keep track of. So on this line 28, I'm going to make a conditional statement. Um, and I, you guys know I love to fill out just the syntax, so my curly braces, my parentheses. And I'm just going to pause here. I know that inside this conditional, the color variable has to change, but this if statement is going to look different because in this if statement, what I now need to say is if the mouse is touching the circle. And that's not something I know how to say yet. And that's where the collide 2D library is going to come in so, so handy. So let's head back to that library and let's just take a look at what's there. So we stopped under this get started part, but if we keep scrolling down, we're first going to see some examples. Cool. We're going to see vector inputs, which like we probably don't know what that is, so we can skip it. But then we're going to come down to this documentation table of contents. This is like our bread and butter where we are going to live in the Collide 2D library. And I think that with a little logic, we can figure things out for this. So I see that there's all these different collision detection functions that they've written for us. And I notice they have um, like all of these. Oops, sorry, guys. They have all of these names with them. Um, I want to find the one that best matches what I need to do. So what I need to do is I need to get my mouse to be touching a circle. So my mouse, there's nothing here that says mouse. There's not even anything here that says cursor. But I know my mouse has an X and a Y coordinate, much like a point. So when I read through this, collide point point would be two points touching. Oh, there's one called collide point circle, and there's one called collide point ellipse. That would be the collision of a point like my mouse and a circle or an oval. Now, when I look at my code, even though I'm using the word ellipse, these are all perfect circles. So I'm going to go ahead and select collide point circle, and I'm going to click it, and it's going to jump me down to the bottom of the page. Now, I'm still on the same page. If I want to get back to the documentation, I would just scroll up. Um, but right now, I am happily on Collide Point Circle, and I'm going to zoom a little bit so we can see it. Um, you guys are going to notice that we have like this huge chunk of code that maybe we're feeling confused about. If you have not been making advanced projects and it's hard for you to read code, this might be confusing. It's okay. We can ignore that a little bit for right now. We're just going to take a look at this right underneath Collide Point Circle, this thing that's in gray. We see that it says collide point circle, and then it has a bunch of different things that we would need to plug into this function. And this should be very reminiscent of the collide 2D, or sorry, the P5 reference sheet, where it tells you like ellipse, X, Y, width, height. Same idea here. And what I like to do is I like to copy this line, and then in my code, I like to just paste it above where I'm working so that I remember what my function is called and what numbers it needs. So I'm actually going to go ahead, I think, and paste this into my conditional statement. So I am pasting it right between those parentheses so I have it. This is my collide point circle function. Now, my computer has no idea what point x, point y, circle x, circle y diameter are. Those are all like placeholder words for these values. I need to go fill in my own numbers. So instead of point x and point y, we said that that's going to be the mouse. 
So I'm going to fill in mouse X and I'm going to fill in mouse Y. So that's my point. Now for circle X, circle Y, and diameter, those are numbers that come directly from my circle. So this says it's for circle one. I'm gonna scroll up to circle one and I see that circle one has an X value of 75, a Y value of 100, and a diameter of 120. So I'm gonna scroll back down and I'm gonna fill in X as 75, Y as 100, and diameter as 120. Now, this whole function is going to be saying, am I colliding or not, true or false? If it's true, this if statement is going to execute. If it's false, it's not, and we're going to end up coding in an else if, to help, or an else statement to help us out with that. So if this collision happens, and I'm just going to move my canvas over for a minute so it's easier for us to see. If my collision happens, I want C1 color, remember that variable we made way back when? I want it to change to a different color. And in this case, I think I'm gonna have it change to yellow because again, that's something I know off the top of my head. Um, and I'm just gonna hit play and see if this works. So once I hit play, I'm gonna move around the screen. It's still magenta, but as soon as I touch that circle, it turns yellow, which is so cool and mind blowing. When I go off that circle, nothing happens. And that's because I haven't given it an else. So let's click back in our code. I'm going to start at the end of line 31 after that curly brace. I'm going to jump down a line and I'm going to put in my else statement. If it is not, if the mouse is not on top of the circle, I just want it to change right back to magenta. So now I hit play. I go over my circle. It's yellow. I come off. It's magenta. Yellow, magenta, yellow, magenta, yellow, magenta. And all I had to do to make that happen was to utilize this function, which is just reporting back to my program Am I on the circle or am I not on the circle? It's just that easy, guys. Um, Collide2D is awesome. I know it can feel very overwhelming. You guys are doing a huge thing that real developers do of reading other people's code and using it in your own. That's an amazing skill to have. So if this feels confusing, just stick with it, try it. I swear it will get easier. Um, we did everything we needed to do for circle one. In your task, you're gonna do the same thing for the next three circles. So each of these circles is gonna need its own variable to control the color. What colors you use are up to you. And each one is gonna have its own if else statement where you are using collide point circle, probably this time with different values, at least for these last three numbers based on the circle that you want to make them change color when the mouse is on the circle and change back when the mouse is off. You know it's working if you can move your mouse over the circle and get the color to change. If something seems off, like it's not changing color at the right time, there might be an issue with our numbers. You can always drop a question in Slack to try and get help from other people or from me or come to support time and I'll help you out. You guys are amazing. You're com becoming such proficient, outstanding developers. and I'm so excited to see your project, guys. Bye.